Talk Business Arkansas is brought to you by the Arkansas Farm Bureau, the Arkansas State Chamber of Commerce and Associated Industries of Arkansas, the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, Noble Strategies, the Arkansas Healthcare Association, and Delta Trust and Bank. Joining me now is Charlie Daniels. He is the state auditor for the state of Arkansas. He has been the Secretary of State and the Commissioner of State Lands before, and he announced his retirement this week. Good to have you with us. Actually, I announced I wasn't going to seek re-election, and uh -huh. everybody, a lot of people thought I was retiring because it's, that's the headline. But anyway, yes, I announced that I will retire after this term. <laughs> that's what it is. What, Haven't retired yet. What? Well, you're going to retire at the end of your term as yes, state auditor, January. which is... 15. That's right. So what's driving retirement for you? I would say that you've had a long and storied career and it is time to retire some point in life. It is. You know, I came to Little Rock and got in politics here with David Pryor in 1975, served four years with him, two years uh, with Bill Clinton as governor, then ran for land commissioner, of course, 18 years there, eight years as secretary of state, now four years or two years actually with Auditor State and uh, I think it's time for me to step aside, let someone else run and see if they can do a good job and uh, I'm proud of the accomplishments that we've made and uh, it's been a full career for me. And, uh, Let's go through some of the different offices and I want to take them one at a time. Okay. Let's start with the Commissioner of State Lands. Right. You were there for almost two decades. Yes. You helped automate that office, brought yes. a lot of things up to speed. What are a couple of the highlights that you'd point to in that office that well, you're proudest of? Initially, it, it was similar to some of the other offices, but uh, there was new legislation had passed that had never been implemented. And that legislation, or that law, called for us to send out notices to everyone, letting them know their uh, taxes were delinquent, their houses or whatever probably to be sold after two years. Well, we only had one memory typewriter. We had 18,000 parcels. so. <laughs> We hired uh, some summer kids and about three or four that came in and helped us. We bought some word processors. It was a while before we had computers, but once we got computers, it was going well. But, uh, so we only had seven individuals. And by the time we started having the land sales, it'd take three people going out. So I had to ask for additional people. And the legislature at that time was reluctant to get me five employees. but. I think we proved that it was necessary because of the dollars we collected. And, you know, from $300,000 by the time I left, it, I think it was close to $16 million. I read 12 the other day, but $16 million. And that money goes back to the county. So I think uh, by the time I left there, it was running smooth. We did some preservation work. I entered into agreement with the uh, Bureau of Land Management mm -hmm. so that we could scan all of the old original patents, the documents. And the current land commissioners has proceeded along that line and it's done a good job with the vault and some of those records. So I would commend him on the job that he's done. Let's move to the Secretary of State's office where right. you were there for eight years, some major renovations at the state capitol and also just the implementation of a lot of new technology. Um, that was a huge undertaking. Well, it, it was a multitude of things. I had, I had been in the state capitol all those years. And so I had preconceived ideas on what I wanted to see happen to the state capitol itself. I had my own ideas about the yards and the grounds and what I wanted to do. So I had an idea on that. Uh, in the meantime, uh, uh, Congress passed the Help America Vote Act, mm -hmm. which called for drastic changes throughout this state. We had to work with all 75 counties and uh, make the tremendous changeover, and it was new for everybody, and it didn't come easy. That was all in the wake of the Bush-Gore election in 2000 yes. that called for all those election reforms. Exactly. Now, I am told that when it comes to the grounds of the Capitol, when you were Secretary of State, you might actually get out there and start plucking some weeds from the flower I, gardens, true? I walked the Capitol grounds every morning and every evening, and I guess one of the funniest things is I'd see where grass was dyed, and I'd called the person in charge and he'd say, well, we it watered it for three hours last night. And I said, well, come on out here where I'm at. And I'd take my knife and stick it in the ground and dust would fly. He said, well, I guess we need a new sprinkler. I said, okay, <laughs> but whatever, put some water on this. I just, I just loved it being pretty and green for the people that come to the state of Arkansas. And then the 
We were able to get grant money from ANCRC and uh, to now, what's ANCRC? the Arkansas Natural and Cultural Resources okay. Council gotcha. uh, for preservation. And they were very good to me. And I used to serve on that board as land commissioner, and I never asked for anything. So I began asking for money to help me with the capital. And uh, we did the dome, and then we did the worst sides first to redo that, plus the interior. A lot of uh, uh, things that went on as far as telecommunications and uh, media downstairs on the first floor. Redid all of the first floor, most every office. The auditor's office is one that people don't really have a full understanding of what it does. You see what the Secretary of State does, the land right. commissioner, as you mentioned, has got the, the delinquent properties and a lot of homestead stuff. The auditor's state actually cuts the checks for the state well, government, for the most part, right. not everything, but a lot of it. And, and you know, it's a, a lot of people think about an auditor of state that we do auditing, we do, but it's legislative audit that does the auditing. But we uh, issue the warrants for all of state government, and I can't remember how many million, but it's a lot of them. And uh, we, we, we don't just issue them uh, without having direct authorization from the, issue, you know, the party that is responsible. But the other thing that a lot of people, that we're trying to make people aware of, and have been very successful, and uh, Janet's done a great job there with unclaimed Jenna property. Harris, Janet Harris, one of your chief Harris. deputies, right? Yes, yeah, she's been my chief deputy uh, for a few years, and uh, she does a great job in the unclaimed property, with, especially with e-filing. And, you know, another it's another situation where we have states calling us, Arkansas, and not that we're bad, but we, we're really uh, in, the, in the lead on some of these renovations and innovations. And so other states are wanting to know how you do it, how do we get it set up. And that was the first thing we did uh, in the first session I was auditor was, I think we asked for $400,000 to upgrade the software in our warrants division so we could process the checks properly and then also in the unclaimed property. And that's where you guys do the great Arkansas treasure hunt. People yes. can come find things that might be left in bank vaults exactly. or bank boxes, deposit boxes. And it's a lot of money. They're $170 million throughout, you know. Yeah. So. We're going to take a quick commercial break here. Word from our sponsors. We'll be back with Charlie Daniels, Auditor of State, announcing that not that he's retiring, but that he's not running for re-election. <laughs> I'm Roby Brock. This is Talk Business. We're back right after this. I don't think it's going to be an easy conversation uh, because they are very strong-willed. I think it's going to be important to us that we know that you're somewhere in a facility uh, that looks after you, has compassion, has care, and you respect it. I mean, I'd love to look after them, I'd love to be able to take care of them, but I don't think I could. That'd be a wrong choice on my part. Arkansas's skilled nursing and assisted living centers provide quality care for our seniors. Farm Bureau helps protect its members in more ways than you might think. They've always been the voice of agriculture in Arkansas, working on behalf of folks like me when nobody else would. And Farm Bureau stands for the values that Arkansas families care about. They've protected my right to farm and make a living, which helps everybody who likes food on the table. You know what they say, Arkansas counts on agriculture, and agriculture counts on Farm Bureau. The Arkansas State Chamber of Commerce and Associated Industries of Arkansas. The State Chamber AIA is the leading voice for business at the state capitol and serves as the primary business advocate on all issues affecting Arkansas employers. Our mission is to promote a pro-business, free enterprise agenda and prevent anti-business legislation, regulations, and rules. Now more than ever, business matters. Learn more at ArkansasStateChamber.com. I was looking for a bank that could best protect my finances. That shared my passion for my business's potential. A bank that offered investment expertise. Linden support. Insurance guidance. A bank that delivered full financial support. That's how I found True Balance. True Balance. From my bank. From my bank. Delta Trust and Bank, the expertise to meet all your financial needs. One of the real advantages of Electric Cooperative's membership is having a voice in our state's energy future. Not a week goes by without important energy issues making headlines. These are issues that need to be discussed. 
And you should know that as policies are being developed, the cooperatives are looking out for our members, advocating what's best for you. We are your friends and neighbors. We are your local electric company. The Electric Cooperatives. We are, we are Arkansas. We're back now with Charlie Daniels. He is the Auditor of State. He announced earlier this week that he will not seek re-election for a second term because he's going to go do what? Fishing? I'm, I'm going to basically drink? retire at that point <laughs> in time. I'm not going to run for another office. And um, I'll spend some time out in Colorado with my daughter who lives there and some grandkids and here also with, I have a granddaughter and son that live here. So, and three sisters in El Dorado. It gives me a chance to get out and travel and visit a little bit and uh, kind of be free. I want to talk about some of your political career escapades. What, what got you, what convinced you to run for office that very first time back in the 1984, I think it was, when you first ran for Commissioner of State Lands? Uh, well, why did you decide that was the time to run for political office? Well, I had worked uh, uh, for David Pryor and for Bill Clinton. And, uh, you know, I just decided I didn't want to move back to El Dorado and uh, be an electrician or work for Arkansas Power and Light. I wanted to continue on in politics. And uh, I enjoyed what I did, and I enjoyed meeting people, and uh, had a great time doing it. And uh, that's the reason I ran. What was it like campaigning in those days? You know, now everything is very media-centered in terms of, you know, commercials on TV. You still go around to a lot of these festivals, but I can remember working on a a documentary one time about Dale Bumper's life and it was I looked back at the 1970 campaign and, and in that campaign it talked about the dwindling crowds at the courthouses this was 1970 and they were complaining that two or three thousand people were on the county courthouse lawns I'm not sure you could get two or three thousand people it, to it any would, courthouse it now. would be difficult to do you still have a big turnout uh, in on the 4th of July parades in uh, eastern Arkansas at uh, uh, Cornet, uh, Corning and Piggott, right. and then Labor Day Parade and Rector, and then the Springdale Rodeo Parade is always a big one. It draws probably ten or 15,000 people. Well, and What was camp campaign like, though, back in 1984? Well, I, I went to each uh, courthouse. You tried to work with the uh, courthouse people, and you make all the events, Pink Tomato Festival uh, and those types of events, pie suppers, and Usually it was a lot, most of the time it was just the uh, candidates there and the people selling the pies and, you know, you'd bid against each other. <laughs> I, I remember one of my first campaigns, when I was first elected it was for two years mm -hmm. and then it became four years and then they had term limits kicked in in 1994, I believe it was. Yeah. But, you know, I, you just kind of don't really love your opponent all that much, but you try to get along, but... Uh, I was determined he wasn't going to buy a pie, so I'd bid it up. I know it's kind of <laughs> awful, but, you know, I felt that way at that uh, time. But I wasn't being mean. It was just fun. That's funny. I think they have reality TV shows about that kind of stuff now, <laughs> storage wars or something like that, yeah. where they run the prices up on things. So, um, so you go around. I think in 1984, The Devil Went Down to Georgia was a pretty big hit yes. by a group called the Charlie Daniels yes. Band. That, that had to not hurt. Yes, it, it didn't hurt, and actually our, my first campaign radio ad uh, had some fiddle music in from a person up in Mountain View, and it went like this, Charlie Daniels, that's a name everyone knows, but this Charlie Daniels doesn't fiddle around. This Charlie Daniels is running for state land commissioner. <laughs> <laughs> It was fun. It carried the day. Yeah. So uh, give me some advice to maybe younger politicians that will watch this interview. You've got to go to pink tomato festivals and pie suppers, as you mentioned, and there's a lot of stuff on the, the food circuit, basically. What's the secret to being a good candidate on the road? Like well, that? people get to know you. Uh, when you're out and you get some one-on-one -on -one visitation. Uh, the crowds may not be as large as they once were, but there are some that really draw the crowds. And the Peak Tomato Festival draws a crowd. And I think you just are able to let people know that you're a real sincere person. I mean, you don't walk on water, you don't do these crazy things, but you are running for a public office and you care and you listen to those people. You need to hear them out. And then when you're elected, you need to continue to listen to the people and try to do the best job you can. Now, 
if you're elected to an office, then you have a responsibility to the people that elected you, but you also have a responsibility to do the best job you can, and they may not always understand the necessary need for additional person or uh, money for a computer or those types of things to make it better, and, and, and it makes it more cost effective for them. So back to my Pink Tomato Festival yeah. example, you were telling me before we started recording here, the secret to some event like the Pink Tomato Festival is not eating as many pink tomatoes <laughs> as fast as you can, it is what? Well, I'll tell you, my, my secret was, uh, whether it's the Watermelon Festival mm -hmm. or the toma Pink Tomato Festival, you just, uh, one tomato would suffice me. <laughs> uh, I had never entered it before until, uh, and Mike Huckabee, the governor, Governor Huckabee, was always entering. And whenever Janet Huckabee was running for Secretary of State, and I was too, uh, I saw her on the stage, and I thought, I better get up there if she's going to be up there. And I got up, and I signed up to eat tomatoes. And she said, "What are you doing? Are you signing up?" I said, "Yeah, I thought you were." And she said, "No, I just up here to cheer Mike on." <laughs> So anyway, I, that was, I ate some tomatoes. <laughs> did, <laughs> but, you, did you eat but, more than her? I, no, I didn't try to. I didn't try to. You were pacing yourself. You knew yeah. there were other campaign stops. Yeah, I don't there. eat all the, try to eat a whole watermelon. I just eat what I think is good for you, you know. So, but Charlie you to. Daniels, I appreciate you very hey, much. thank you. It's been great to know you all these years, and I'm going to keep knowing you, obviously, but it's been great well, to work with you and cover you, you and, on the, and at the Capitol. I appreciate what you do as far as letting people know what's taking place in the state of Arkansas, in the world of business and politics. So. Uh, that's an endorsement we'll take to the bank. <laughs> Charlie Daniels is the Auditor of State. Thank you very much for being here. Thank I'm Roby Brock. You can keep up with the latest business and political news each and every day at our website, talkbusiness.net or talkbusinessarkansas.com. I'm Roby Brock. We'll see you next time. Talk Business Arkansas is brought to you by the Arkansas Farm Bureau, the Arkansas State Chamber of Commerce and Associated Industries of Arkansas, the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, Noble Strategies, the Arkansas Healthcare Association, and Delta Trust and Bank.